go on a little tour down along the Fox River. And people ask me to tell stories about things that happened in the past, and it so happens to be that in an area just a little ways down the river and across the river from here, there's a Christian university. It's a Baptist type of Christian university. I, it does not have any official affiliation with any Baptist church in particular. But Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham, attended this Christian college. Uh, it's called a university now. I guess they got accredited as university. And they've been growing and getting more enrollment and needing more buildings. So in addition to building additional classroom space and buildings, they've also purchased some buildings that were adjacent to the campus and added them on to the campus itself. And one of these buildings right on the highway used to be a Ramada Inn. And I think even before it was a Ramada Inn, it was a few other things. It's about six stories, as I recall. I think it's six stories high. And it even had a swimming pool, although I don't think they kept the swimming pool in service. I, they may have even eliminated that, put concrete over the top of it. But when they, uh, somebody flashed their lights, I bet you maybe that means somebody radaring ahead, which is fine. I don't really go over this. What am I doing? 50? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's 45 here. I'm not sure. But, uh, well, there's nobody behind me anyway. I might as well slow down and really cruise. Look at some of the beautiful scenery. But anyway, along with purchasing this Ramada Inn, the Ramada Inn had a leased restaurant underneath with a full bar. And I have no idea how it happened this way, but when they closed down the bar and the restaurant, they left it fully stocked. I mean, brand new stuff and lots and lots of it. Everything from beer to uh, hard liquor. Okay, this is 30 right here, so we'll slow way down. And, uh, yeah, so they ended up, uh, when they did the survey of the building, they were surprised to find a fully stocked bar down in the basement, or ground level, I guess, whatever you would call it. And being that most of these people were of, uh, conservative Baptist denominations, I imagine probably when they grew up in their homes, there wasn't even any kind of alcohol allowed in their houses, so... My guess is they were probably scared to even touch it. And my wife and I, well, we're not really that much into drinking. I know my wife will have a beer on occasion. I just don't drink at all, not for any particular religious prohibition. I just, there's other things that are a lot less expensive, so why pay for beer or stuff like that when you like something just as well that's a lot cheaper? So I just, it's, for me, it's just a preference not to drink. I don't have any uh, thinking in my head that I'm displeasing God by drinking. So, um, they asked my wife if she'd be willing to just take it and get rid of it some way whatsoever. So, we had a little Dodge Omni at the time, or no, it was Plymouth Horizon, they're basically the same vehicle. And so, uh, it did fit, but boy, other than where she was sitting, all of the rest with that little Plymouth Horizon was full of booze. All the way from whiskey, vodka, all your kinds of hard liquor to wines. There was a huge selection of wines and lots and lots of beer. And uh, all it did was just kind of shift the problem to us to figure out how to deal with. Um, I think pretty much the conclusion we came to ourselves just by discussing it is we took all the hard stuff, all the vodka, whiskey, and things like that, and just dumped it down the drain. Which probably will make some of my friends here listening to this cringe, but that is what we did. It was pretty much left up to us to decide, and then I, I had quite a few friends uh, 
from work and other friends around the neighborhood that I knew. Like to drink wine and beer on occasion and stuff like that. So we uh, spent the next year just slowly passing it out as much as we could to anybody that we always thought was pretty much responsible in their drinking habits. So. Yeah, we had, uh, I think we passed out the champagne, the uh, sparkling wines, which is pretty much the same thing as champagne, I'm guessing. I'm not, because I'm not a drinker, you could probably fool me as far as the names of a lot of things. But yeah, lots of whiskey, vodka, and I think even tequila went down the drain. Lots and lots and lots of it, so. The fish living in the river were very happy that day, probably. But anyway, besides my story, I also wanted to take this opportunity to promote the Polar Bear Challenge coming up in just a very few short weeks. By the time some of you see this, it may be only as much as a week or two away. If you get a chance, go to the website, polarbearchallenge.ning.com, and I'd also like to do a shout out to the Solar Bear Challenge. Oh, they're doing some work here next to the old hospital. They used to be Sherman Hospital. Now they built that out way out west of here. The uh, judge this year for the Solar Bear Challenge is Zepoxy. And last I heard a couple of days ago from Rob RC62 was that information would be coming soon. So look at Zipoxy's channel, which will be down in the description below. Or if you follow Rob RC62, I'm sure since he was the founder of it, he will be promoting it as well. And I would like to ask all my friends, if you're watching this, if you intend to make a video sometime in the next week or two, please, if you haven't before, give it a mention, give a shout out to both of the things. Uh, I'd hate to see somebody find out about it about halfway through and then think, wow, I wish somebody would have told me or mentioned it a little bit sooner so I could get more involved. I want everybody that wants to participate have a chance to participate in either one or like last year, I guess you could participate in both. I guess at the time the two judges, uh, Navy Thomas and Gogasaur, decided that if uh, people chose to participate in both the Solar Bear Challenge and the Polar Bear Challenge, they could do both simultaneously. Uh, as far as this year, I can't answer that. I'm not a judge. The judge for the Polar Bear Challenge this year is Bob1954 Shadow, and then also Navy Thomas 8 as his backup if he needs extra help or an extra hand at making calls in gray areas or whatever. So. And I'd like to encourage everybody, if somebody asks you to lend an extra hand to help out, it does get busy at times, and it's a lot for people to do, especially sometime for two, week, two or three weeks in a row when people are really posting a lot quickly. They could use an extra hand sometimes, so don't be afraid to volunteer. And uh, I want to do a special thank you to my bro Todd Kapoo, who's taking on what I think is the hardest job in the entire Polar Bear Challenge, and that is keeping track of the stats and doing the accounting work. Boy, that is a lot harder than you would expect. I attempted to start doing it last year and Everyday Writing was kind enough to take it off my hands, especially after the first time turning him down and saying, no, no, I've, uh, I've got it under control, which I didn't. I'd already, by the second time he asked, I already made two bad mistakes and then he took over and uh, made it right, so... Yeah, it's nice to have somebody that knows what they're doing. It's bizarre because I've always been good at math, algebra, trigonometry, stuff like that, but accounting, I don't know. I tried taking uh, one of those online courses, not online, but uh, back before online courses, they have this little public television station that was doing accounting 101. And by the time I watched the third class, I was completely confused. And I stayed for three more classes hoping that it would get more clear or they would explain things to where 
I could understand them and I was lost. I just gave up after the sixth show. I knew it's not my thing. Some people are meant to do certain things. Some people are meant to do something else. I'm one of the ones that's meant to do something else.